In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at optimization, and we're going to be looking at optimizing the TV studio scene for virtual production. A lot of these optimizations are also great for doing in any real-time project. For the TV studio, as you can see, we've done a lot of the optimizations for you already. One of the main things about the optimization is we've baked all the lighting in. The reason we baked it in is because we've been using path trace lighting. If we were to have the path tracer on in the scene, the scene would run probably at about one frame a second. So it's not a viable option to do for real time. How we do this is we take the path trace lighting, we bake it into light maps. These light maps get rendered onto the material and so they don't have an overhead on the GPU. For more information about the bake lighting, please use the link in the description below. So the freeze geometry node is another great way to optimize the scene. You take a number of objects and you pipe them into the freeze geometry node and these objects will combine to make one object, which is a great saving on the GPU. Because these 3D object nodes are no longer being used in the node graph, they're also helping reduce the CPU as well. So when grouping together objects to use for the freeze geometry node, the best way I found is if you select lots of objects that are a similar surface, I've selected all the floor pieces and I've connected those together because they make up one surface and it's just easier to manage, you know where all your objects are that make up the floor, you know which freeze geometry node is making up those objects. The using the freeze geometry node is very easy. We've got a video tutorial on the freeze geometry node and the link in the description, but I'll just quickly generalize how to use it. You can move your objects around and you just toggle the freeze geometry node on and off and you'll see the freeze geometry icon comes on the nodes and that 3D mesh has now been created. Once you've frozen the geometry and you've baked all the lighting, what you want to also look at doing is caching any materials. If we go through our materials, we've got some pretty heavy, interesting materials here. This material here, it's got about 17 or 18 node inputs on it, which all contribute to the CPU. What I want to do is cache this, and when it caches it, it'll render all the textures into cached textures and plug them straight into the material. Let me show you how this is done. They're my original textures, we can ignore those. I'm going to select material, right click on it, go to the options on the material and cache the material. And if I hit back and play, you can see that that material is now cached. If I go back to my material, you can see there's new textures being piped into it. And these are the ones that have been generated. Apart from the mapping, I can delete all of these nodes because they're not used anymore. Now you can see it's exactly the same. Nothing's changed, but we're saving all that overhead of all those nodes. When caching materials, unfortunately, you can't cache a video. Once you've gone around, cached all the materials, there are a few other things you can do. One of them is the reflections in the scene. You can see that the scene is actually reflecting everywhere and we don't necessarily want that to happen because that's a big overhead in performance. I'm going to select some of the floor geometry. I'm going to pipe that straight into the affected objects on the screen space reflections. And you can see immediately it's taken a little bit of the reflections off and you probably won't miss that. But what you will miss are the reflections on the floor. So we definitely want them there. Now the other key areas that could do with some reflections are the stages as well. So I'm going to grab those. I'm going to pipe those straight to the screen space reflections as well. All the floor areas are now using screen space reflections and none of the other areas up here are doing so, which is a really important optimization. The last thing to do is go around and look at any other nodes that are either turned off or not being rendered. The freeze geometry nodes we can leave, but things like these lighting nodes, they're actually baked in at the moment, so we don't need these lights. If you want key lights to have some specular reflections, you can keep them. You can apply specular only by turning off the diffuse. What I tend to do is just delete them all because everything's baked in there. Also the path tracer node, that's a node we're not going to use once it's running real time, so we can delete that. Going down to the branded materials in this location, you've got all the pre-comp layers as well still. Now the pre-comp layers are going to have a performance overhead. It's only going to be two or three milliseconds if that, but two or three milliseconds is quite important when you're aiming to run at around 10 milliseconds for your project. Take the layer pre-comps and render them out as video like we have here. Once you've done all the optimization, then you look at compiling your block for the media server. All of these optimizations have been documented with video tutorials. Please find the links to the tutorials in the description below. Thank you for listening to this tutorial and I hope you can join me on the next Notch tutorial.